Hey, good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday morning to you. Still reading Elledge's book. Boy, good stuff. Anyway, um, welcome back. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. Now, I'm sharing with you that the language of Matthew 24, 29 and following, the sun being dark and the moon would not give its light, uh, the stars of heaven would not give their light, moon being turned to blood, excuse me, the stars of heaven not giving its light, the powers of the heaven would be shaken. Uh, by the way, that, that reference, powers of the heavens, is, re, uh, is a reference to the spiritual powers. That ought to tell us right there it's sort of kind of an unseen event, should it not? Well, anyway, so <clears throat> I, I've been sharing with you that this language that sounds like the destruction of material creation is typical Hebraic uh, language. It was never intended to be taken literally. In fact, as we've been seeing from a from a, an examination of Isaiah chapter 34, if you take that language literally, you, you wind up with horrible self-contradictions within the text. Now, yesterday I shared with you, well, let me back up just a little bit. One of my detractors on Facebook called me a heretic and false teacher uh, because uh, Isaiah 34, he claimed, is definitely about the end of time. It may predict the destruction of Edom, in verse 5 and following, but verses 1 to 4, since it talks about, quote, all the nations, then it has to be talking about the end of time. Well, I shared with you yesterday that Jeremiah predicted the destruction of Edom, all right? But it also predicted the destruction of all the nations on the face of the earth. Hello? Well, I guess that Edom will have to yet be destroyed. But wait a minute. Here's a hint and a clue. The kingdom, I don't mean the dirt, the kingdom of Edom, which was standing and powerful in the days of Isaiah, which was standing and powerful in the days of Jeremiah and Ezekiel, that kingdom, and oh, by the way, that people do not exist today. They're gone. So since, quote, all the nations of the earth that dwell on the face of the earth were supposed to be destroyed at the time of Edom's destruction, oh, and that would be because they drank out of the cup that Jeremiah took out of the hand of the Lord. Oh, and by the way, they would be destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar, the Lord's servant, who would have the Lord's sword in his hand. Okay, next passage that I ask you to read for homework is Ezekiel chapter 30 or 25. Now, in Ezekiel chapter 25, going all the way through chapter 30, and actually 31, you have the major players in the list of the nations found in Jeremiah 25. All right? In Ezekiel chapter 25, and by the way, let me get ahead of myself just a little bit and to point out that in Ezekiel chapter 30, 24 and following, just like Jeremiah Chapter 25, 8 and 9 tells us, exactly parallel, Ezekiel chapter 30 tells us it was Nebuchadnezzar, king of the Babylonians, that was going to bring about the destruction of all the nations of the earth. I, I, folks, it can't get any clearer than that. Now, in Ezekiel chapter 25, let's just start, uh, well, you know, verse 1 and two, the Lord has a burden against Ammon, mentioned in Jeremiah 25. Verse 8, the Lord has the burden against Moab and Seir, mentioned in Jeremiah chapter 25. Oh, now, wait a minute. Hang on here. Verse 12, thus says the Lord God, because of what Edom did against the house of Judah by taking vengeance and is greatly offended by avenging Judah. 
herself itself on them. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, I will also stretch out my hand against Edom, cut off man and beast from it, make it desolate from Teman, and Dedan shall fall by the sword. I will lay my vengeance on Edom by the hand of the people of Israel that they may do in Edom according to my anger and according to my fury so that they may know my vengeance, says the Lord. Well, then, in chapter 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30, we have the prediction of the destruction of the very nations listed in Jeremiah 25. And let me once again make the point. In chapter 30, in the proclamation against Pharaoh, but you see it's the same time as the destruction of Moab, Ammon, Seir, Edom. Notice this. I will strengthen the arms of the king of Babylon, put my sword in his hand. But I will break Pharaoh's arms. He will groan before him with the groaning of a mortally wounded man. Thus I will strengthen the arms of the king of Babylon, but the arms of Pharaoh shall fall down. They shall know that I am the Lord when I put my sword in the hand of the king of Babylon and he stretches it out against the land of Egypt. Egypt. Oh, but it's not just Egypt. It's also Edom. Now, notice back here in chapter 25, he said he was going to destroy Edom because of the violence that they had done to, the, to Judah. Well, in order to understand that, we need to go over to the little book of Obadiah. Uh, in Obadiah, now, back here in Ezekiel, the Lord said, I'm going to destroy Edom because of the violence they have done to my people. You have to understand that the Edomites, the descendants of Esau, took advantage of the Babylonian invasion of Judah. There were three invasions of Judah, 606 B.C., 597 B.C., and the final destruction in 586 B.C. Somewhere between the very first invasion and the last destruction, the Edomites took advantage of the Babylonian invasion and began to plunder, to rob, to kill, and to murder the inhabitants of Jerusalem as they fled. And so the Lord was saying in Ezekiel chapter 25, because of what they've done to their relatives, to their kin, to their blood, I'm going to destroy them. Now, we need to look at the book of Obadiah. Now remember folks, I'm basically still answering two things. It is the language of the destruction of all the nations is the language of cosmic destruction, is the language of the coming of the Lord to be taken literally, or is it metaphoric? We have already seen that the language of the destruction of Edom sounds like the destruction of heaven and earth, and it's the day of the Lord's vengeance. In Jeremiah 25, it's the day of the Lord, the coming of the Lord, with a shout. It's the descent of the Lord's arm out of heaven. It's the time in which the cup of the Lord is given to the nations and the nations drink the cup of God's wrath. Oh, but Nebuchadnezzar was given God's sword to destroy all the nations on the face of the earth. Now, if that's not hyperbolic language, I don't know what is. All right? Obadiah. The Lord addresses Edom, and the word is not good. Verse 2, Behold, I will make you small among the nations. Now, please, again, keep in mind that from Isaiah 34 to the time of Jeremiah, pardon me, Jeremiah 25 to the time of Ezekiel, Edom had never been totally defeated, never had been. Their kingdom was set among the, the mountains and the rocks. Pardon me, the caves, they were considered impregnable, invulnerable. 
So for the Lord to predict the downfall of Edom was, an, was a major, major prophecy. Okay, verse 2 again of Obadiah. Behold, I will make you small among the nations. You shall be greatly dis despised. The pride of your heart has deceived you, you who dwell in the clefts of the rocks. Now watch this. Whose habitation is high, you say in your heart, who will bring me down to the ground? Though you ascend as high as the eagle, and though, watch this, though you set your nest among the stars, from there I will bring you down. What? Edom made her home among the stars? Oh, wait a minute. What happens if the stars fall from heaven? Yeah, yeah. Why was God going to destroy Edom? Verse 10, for violence against your brother Jacob, shame shall cover you, and you shall be cut off forever. In the day that you stood on the other side, in the day that strangers carried captive his forces, when foreigners entered his gates and cast lots for Jerusalem, even you were as one of them. In other words, you joined with the Babylonians in plundering Jerusalem. You should not have gazed on the day of your brother in the day of his captivity, nor should you have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction, nor should you have spoken proudly in the day of distress. You should not have entered the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. And indeed, you should not have gazed upon their affliction in the day of their calamity, nor laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. You should not have stood at the crossroads to cut off among them those who have escaped, nor should you have delivered up those who, who were among them who remained in the day of distress. For, see that connected particle? The day of the Lord upon all the nations is near. As you have done, it shall be done to you. Now, wait a minute. Remember, in Isaiah, there was no prediction that the day of the Lord against Edom was at hand. Here in Obadiah, a couple of hundred years later almost, the day of the Lord against Edom and all the nations is near. So we have no time statement in Isaiah 34. Now we have a time statement in Obadiah. And oh, by the way, we've got a very power and powerful, although implicit, time statement in Jeremiah and in Ezekiel. Because guess what? It was Nebuchadnezzar who was going to destroy Edom. You know what that meant? That meant it was going to happen in that generation. <laughs> kind of inescapable, isn't it? Well, you know what? I'm basically out of time for this morning. So here's what we have. Isaiah 34, Edom and all the nations who dwell on the face of the earth are going to be destroyed. All the cosmos will be dissolved. Earth will be rolled up like a scroll. The dust and the dirt will be turned to pitch. The streams will burn day and night forever. The wild animals will live uh, there in the ruins of Edom as Edom burns day and night forever. So the question therefore becomes, has the prophecy of Isaiah, was the prophecy of Jeremiah 25, was the prophecy of Ezekiel 25, and was the prophecy of Obadiah, which Jeremiah and Ezekiel and Obadiah teach us was near. It was not hundreds of years off, but was it fulfilled? Well, tell, I tell you what, read Malachi chapter 1, and we'll pick up with that next Monday. Hey, don't forget, time's basically up. Here we are, all three books. Here we are. Take advantage. Take advantage. If you purchase these books separately, $60. If you purchase these books in the January 2020 U.S. Orders Only Special, $40 delivered to your door. If you're not in the U.S. but you wish to purchase these three books at a greatly reduced price for PDF copies, 
contact me through my website and we'll help you out at a greatly reduced price. Okay, thank you so much for joining me for this morning's Morning Musings. Don't forget tomorrow we'll continue with our refutation of Mr. Lance Conley's book, Hope Resurrected. I, I think you have seen, and from the feedback on, on YouTube as well as Facebook, uh, it's more than apparent that you see uh, how really, really weak, how utterly, what a failure his book is to falsify covenant eschatology. And we'll keep showing you that, all right? Thanks for joining me. I'll see you on the flip side.